Brian, he showed me how to use students' fingers in groups of tens and ones to develop efficient mental strategies for addition. What about subtraction? Well, it works just as well. You remember when we looked at addition, we were looking at a strategy called bridging to 10, and you and I demonstrated that for seven and five, we worked out, I've got seven, three more make 10, and two more make 12. They build up to the 10 like this. Some students don't seem to realize that the same thing works for subtraction. For example, I've seen students who can work that out, seven and five, three more make 10, two more make 12, but if you ask them something like 14 minus six, they'll count back by ones. They don't realise that we could do the same thing. If you could give me the four for 14, if I want to take six, I could take four and then take the other two and the answer is going to be eight. Right. When I do this though, I mean, I wouldn't, when I'm teaching subtraction basic facts, like 14 subtract six is eight, uh, I wouldn't want them to actually subtract four and then subtract two more because the way I would do it is, is you teach, you know, the, the addition facts really well and the connection to the inverse operation being subtraction. So that when they see 14 subtract 6, they say, I know the answer is 8, because I know 8 and 6 is 14. Right. I agree. But the reason they should know, I feel anyway, that bridging to 10 works for subtraction is when they get to larger numbers and they're given a question like 34 minus 6, mm. what might they do then? I certainly agree they should know. Yeah, you're not likely to use, well, you could, most definitely, but they're more likely to subtract, aren't they, if you had a number like that. That's right. So I guess what you're saying is we're doing it with these smaller numbers, which are really the basic facts, as a prerequisite skill to doing it with the, the larger two.